Welcome to the hidden dangers of private jet travel. Yes, this is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, welcome to Budget TV. So we're going to be uh, going through um, the safety regulations around private aviation, aircraft accidents, incidents, the real numbers, uh, the human factors, maintenance on these aircraft, uh, weather related accidents, uh, incidents, emergency uh, uh, procedures and training, and of course, charge and ownership. Of these private jets these are the kind of the subjects we're going to be covering in today's episode here of bizjet tv welcome to the channel if you haven't been here already i encourage you to subscribe lots of information here about business aviation also check out my book the quantum economy lots of information on here how you can join the quantum economy as an entrepreneur today this is really really important and inside uh, this book there's lots of stories of people that own private jets and how they are using the private jet to build their business and this is really, really the key. As I always tell people, um, you know, don't think you're buying a plane. In reality, you're buying time. And, you know, you will join the quantum economy if you start using a private jet as a business tool. So um, let's get into today's episode here. My name is Fabi Tsipoli, your aviation advisor, aviation strategist. Um, and here to tell you about the hidden dangers here of private jet travel. So the first one is safety regulations. Now, uh, the regulations um, for uh, aircraft are pretty much the same whether they're airlines or, or or that you know the pilot licenses are the same of course when we're talking about private jets um you can operate these privately which means they're not on an air operator certificate and if you're operating them privately uh, the rules and regulations aren't as strict uh, one of them being for example pilot duty times also pilot training can be done differently if the airplane is operated privately and not on a uh, an aoc an air operator certificate as they call it the second thing is, uh, well, what's the safety record? Let's let's be real. Here, as you can see, coming up on the screen here, uh, if we look at the numbers, actually, uh, private jet travel is 15 times more expensive than first class travel. But if you look at the safety uh, factors, it's 9.2 times more dangerous. So you're paying 15 times more money to risk 9.2 times more your life by traveling by private jet. And these just are the core numbers. Now, yes, some of those numbers are driven by the, the, the so-called pilot owners that fly around on their own plane, uh, but we'll get into that uh, a bit later. So let's talk about, you know, human factors and errors. Um, and, and this uh, happens in private aviation. The training um, isn't done as uh, meticulously as it's done and, and thoroughly as it's done in the airlines. And I'm a pilot myself. Uh, I've flown private jets. I've flown for a number of different airlines as well. And I can tell you the training environment is very, very different. And the environment in which you operate um, in an airline is 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 very different to uh, private jets. But, you know, the private jet does actually require more skill. And this is interesting because very often the pilot is doing a lot um, on his or her own, uh, from flight planning to securing the aircraft after a flight, uh, cleaning the aircraft sometimes and that. These are all things that as an airline captain, you never have to do because you've got a team of people running around the airplane. And it's all you need to do is look at the weather, look at the um the flight plan number of passengers load and that decide how much fuel you want and then do one pilot does the walk around the other one sets stuff up in the cockpit ready for the flight and then off you go um you've got flight attendants in the back looking after the passengers you've got engineers looking after the, the maintenance of the airplane and that and it will secure the airplane once you land on the other end um so the pilot doesn't have to worry about these other factors which uh, as a operator of private aircraft you have to worry about the whole thing so um there's that factor and maintenance of course is is another thing uh when you're in an airline you've got a maintenance department that look after the airplane they pretty much tell the pilot oh this plane's going into maintenance tomorrow you'll be flying another one um and usually with an airline you've got four five six seven eight airplanes i mean i've flown for airline startup airline when we started with one airplane and then ended up have, having 11 and then the, the airline went bust i've flown for airlines with seven or eight airplanes and airlines with 300 airplanes um, so they all have their maintenance departments that, that run the show and and with the airlines I'd say most of the time the maintenance is done well there are a couple of airlines I flew for which the maintenance was done very badly they also bought bad aircraft um, but I've also flown for you know airlines where the, the the maintenance was just incredible I flew for one low-cost airline and in four and a half years I was only late twice and one of them being an attempted hijacking um trying to bring in a bomb on the airplane and then the other one i think we we're waiting for a windscreen wiper to come in from dublin and it was half an hour late um other than that it was on time all the time because so, the maintenance was done really really well and so you get that with the airlines and with the private jet because it's private you know sometimes things go wrong 
as a pilot, the pilot doesn't is told not to write it in the book. We'll wait, do another two or three flights, and then we'll write that thing in the book, and then we'll ground the airplane and we'll get it fixed. Um, while with the airlines, this doesn't happen, or at least with good airlines, this doesn't happen. The next thing is weather related. In the airline, uh, basically the, the captain is in charge. So, you know, you're given the weather. As the captain, you decide um, how much fuel you're going to have on board when you're flying and you're coming in to land. If suddenly the weather's bad and you have to do a go around or you want to divert to another um, airport, you make that decision. Well, when you're flying a private jet, you've got the boss sitting in the back or the passenger in the back. You know, they don't care if the weather's bad. Some of these people just want to land. Um, and so as the pilot in command, you have to sort of say to them that this is not happening. Um, and so there are a lot of weather related accidents where pilots get bullied or they fear the boss or getting sacked. And so they do something that they shouldn't really be doing and, and then the crash happens. Just interrupting the video very briefly because here on BizJet TV we're giving out lots of free general information about private jets and the private jet world. But if you are really contemplating buying a private jet, let's help you to make that decision in the best informed way by getting very specific, specific to your case. And to do that, just ping me an email and we will schedule you in for a one-to-one -one call and help come up with the right strategy so that you, your team, your family can start joining that quantum economy. So ping me an email, let's get on a call. Let's get back to the video, off we go. The other factor is emergency procedures and training. Um, with the airlines, pilots are training all the time. Uh, you're in the simulator at least twice a year. Uh, for a few days and that's coupled with some ground school and then there's probably some lectures happening in between or some online training that you're doing so as an airline pilot you are constantly training all the time and that's really really good because new discoveries are happening all the time uh, new things get introduced new ideas get implemented and so the airlines are usually continuously improving their training systems and as a, as a pilot you're responsible you know, you've got to pass a medical every year so you've got to be fit um, you've got to know your emergency procedures and everything in that um, you're constantly being checked and tested and, and whatnot. And so, you know, you, you all the time you're on the edge and you're always you know, improving yourself because that's just how an airline works. But when you're flying a, a private jet um, and there's, you know, I've flown private jets before where there's just me managing the airplane for the owner. Now and again, I bring in another pilot, um, another flight department I worked for. There was just four of us and you sort of manage things between you. Um, I've got friends of mine right now flying airplanes that they only fly like 100 hours a year for the owner and there's just two of them so they're not getting much flying in and there's just two of them so um, again the training with a private jet should be like the airlines um, in order to get the safety uh, standards up also because a lot of private jets as I said you know they don't fly much I mean, with the airlines today most airline pilots are flying about eight nine hundred maybe sometimes a thousand hours a year um, and if you're flying long haul, uh, you may be flying more than that because you're spending time in, on, in the bunk, which is not logged. Um, a lot of civil aviation authorities around the world have a limit of 900 hours a year that a pilot can fly. Uh, but there are some airlines that are having you fly for 900 hours in the cockpit and then you're spending another three or 400 in the bunk. So you maybe do the takeoff, fly for three hours, then go back, sleep for eight, then come back fr front, back into cockpit and fly. Those eight hours you're in the bunk and are not part of your 900 hours. So, you know, this is a lot of flying and uh, this can cause all sorts of problems, fatigue and whatnot um, with the airlines. Um, but, you know, with the um, private jet operation, it's really, really important that your pilots are continuously trained. You don't do the training event once a year. Most owners send their pilots to the simulator once a year because if you're living in Europe and the simulator is in Dallas, uh, you know, you want to try and time it when the, the airplane's down for maintenance and then send the pilots out for a week so they maybe need a day to get there, a day to climatize and they do the training and then they come back and they may be out for 10 days. Um, and so they say, well, we can't do this twice a year, we're only going to do it once a year. But you know, at the end of the day, if you're spending all this money on a private jet, you've got to really spend money on the pilot training and make sure these guys are trained. Because uh, you can hire a good pilot today, but if he doesn't keep up with the training, he's it's a bit like, you know, when you go to the gym, you can be really fit today and then decide to not train for three or four months. You're going to be very out of shape after three or four months. And it's going to take a while to get back into it. So, so it's the same with the pilot training. It, th this needs to be a, a continuous thing. And I always tell owners, you need to really invest more money uh, in, in your pilot training. 
which is really, really important. Just interrupting the video very briefly because here on Bizjet TV, we're giving out lots of free general information about private jets and the private jet world. But if you are really contemplating buying a private jet, let's help you to make that decision in the best informed way by getting very specific, specific to your case. And to do that, just ping me an email and we will schedule you in for a one-to-one -one call and help come up with the right strategy so that you, your team, your family can start joining that quantum economy. So ping me an email, let's get on a call. Let's get back to the video, off we go. And then last but not least is charter. Shall I charter? Shall I uh, own an airplane? This is always a debate. Um, when you charter, you never know what you're going to get, particularly if you're using a lot of these fancy apps out there, trying to go out there and find the cheapest private jet flight possible. That's very, very dangerous. As I said, you know, the uh, safety record is 9.2 times worse with a private jet than with the airlines. So does this mean that every private jet operator is dangerous? Does this mean you should never buy a private jet because you you got nine times more chances of crashing and dying than flying, you know, EasyJet or Southwest Airlines or Delta Airlines or Singapore Airlines or whatever? Uh, no, because the private jet operation can actually be a lot safer than the airlines if you choose the right people, so hire the right pilots, give them a good budget for training um, and also for the maintenance, um, and you your flight department can run a lot more efficiently and a lot more safer than the best airline in the world. Um, and I do know a few private jet outfits where they do exactly this. Um, there's one one comes to mind and their pilots go into the to simulator training four times a year. When it's only required to go once, they're going four times a year. And every time they go, they're doing extra simulator training. They've got ground school. The pilots are going on courses all the time. Um, and, you know, this flight department has been going for over 35 years, never had an incident, never had an accident. Now, uh, is the owner paying more money for the training? Because the other factor, which is important to, for you to understand, if you're watching this, and you're thinking about coming into the private jet world, buy your own aircraft and that, is that the pilot training on the private jets is a lot more expensive than the airlines. Just to give you a ballpark figure, you want to uh, um, pay for training for your pilots on a G550 or Falcon 7X, or whatever, you know, it's going to cost you about sixty to $70,000 for one pilot for their initial training, and then about thirty to 35000 a year for their recurrent training. While if you qualify a pilot on a, to fly a Boeing 737 or an Airbus 320 these days, you can do that for just $12,000. And the recurrence like four or 5,000. Um, so, you know, you got to budget for this and you shouldn't get lost in the spreadsheet trying to think that, oh, I have to make this as economical as possible. You need to do two things. Uh, well, first of all, you need to think you're buying time. You're not buying a jet. So if this thing's not available, it's broken down or you've crashed and you someone's dead, then, you know, the time's gone out the window. So you have to think of time. And then what you need to do is when you're looking at the spreadsheet, there are things on the spreadsheet that aren't on the spreadsheet. For example, suddenly a plane can break down and planes do break down. Then what happens? How soon can we get it fixed? Where do we get it fixed? How soon can we get the spare parts? This is another thing you need to think about. And with the pilot training, you know, you need to budget for more training. So if all these Different people have given you, oh, yeah, this is the minimum requirement and it's, the pilot training is only going to cost you 200000 a year. OK, wait a minute. What's that 200000 for and for how many pilots? OK, what what what, what training is included there? Um, you know, can we do some extra training? How much is that going to cost? So I'd almost take that budget and double it. And then some people will tell you, oh, you're only going to need two pilots to operate your airplane because the guy's trying to sell you a plane. OK, so he's going to tell you, oh, you only need two pilots. You pay 170000 another 150 and off you go and they'll be happy when that's the wrong salary and, and even on the trip. So you, people will cut corners on the salaries. People will cut corners on just hiring two pilots instead of three or four. Um, people will cut corners on the training. They said, no, we won't go and do training twice a year. We'll just do it once a year. Um, you know, and all this, unfortunately, adds into causing this safety record to be where it is today. So if you want to really improve the safety record, and, and, and I'm, no, I'm telling you, Private jets can be 10 times safer than airlines, but they need to be managed in a certain way. And this is really, really important. You need to invest in your pilots, in the training, uh, make sure you get preventative maintenance done um, and all things like that. This will keep you flying. OK, and if it keeps you flying, guess what? You, you, that time that you bought is is there. And that's really, really important. And that's the way to think about it. It's really, really the key. So these are the you know eight dangerous factors uh, as far as private aviation is concerned, this is why private aviation is dangerous for these reasons. 
and uh, if you've been following me for a while you would have seen a number of accident reports and that, that I've done um, I'm on TV now and again um, talking about accidents and giving my accident analysis and also in the book the quantum economy I talk about this I talk about pilot training and that how important it is so you need to if you're thinking of buying a private jet get yourself a copy of this book have a read and then if you want to get on a call jump on a call with me and ping me an email and we can have a one-to-one -one call and get very specific as I've said before here on this video and uh, help you make the right choice private jet wide. Now, if you want to find out more about you know the accidents that have happened and that and just hear specific case studies that have been done on, on different scenarios where planes have crashed and why they crashed there's a series of videos here on Bizjet TV you can check this one out and then check also the playlist out um, and spend some time doing your research and uh, reach out to me and let's do a call and that's all from Lisa Polly on Bizjet TV I'll see you on the next one